Howdy folks and welcome to another salient process IBM BPM technical tutorial. In this edition we're going to talk about the ability to perform administrative commands against both WebSphere application server and BPM from within the context of a BPM environment. Now, before we get into that, let's talk about how administrative commands work today. So today, you can perform administrative commands against WAS or BPM by using one of two primary activities. You can use the WS Admin command line tool and perform degrees of scripting. So you can put those in batch files or uh, uh, DOS command shell scripts or whatever you have. And you can run administrative commands from the command line. Or, alternatively, you can use the browser-based WAS Admin Console, connect that to your BPM server, and again make administrative command changes to the WAS server through the WAS Admin Console. Now, in both those cases, those are the end user tools or the, uh, the administrator tools. And under the covers, WAS saves its data to XML configuration files and various other places, which are used by both WAS and BPM when the server starts up. That's the story. Now, as we study this, we find the WS Admin and WAS Admin Console are both front ends to a WebSphere application server specific set of Java classes. And those Java classes, I'm about to bring the browser over, those Java classes are called the WAS Command Manager. Now the Command Manager is part of the WebSphere Management Command Framework and it's a relatively simple to use Java class which can be used to perform administrative commands. So if in a Java program I have access to a Command Manager object, I can write applications which perform administrative commands. So what kinds of administrative commands can I run? Well, you've got access to all of the normal WebSphere application server commands. But in addition, you have a lot, in fact, over a hundred different admin commands which can be used for BPM administration from defining systems to archiving toolkits to setting environment variables to importing application servers and the list goes on and on and on and on. Now normally these are commands which are not available to you from within a BPM environment. You can run these commands from a uh, shell script or from uh, uh, command line tools but you can't call these from within a BPM environment. Now, for many of these commands, that makes sense. Uh, if you're defining a new BPM server, what sense, what does it mean to add a new BPM server from within a BPM server? But there are certain sets of commands which are indeed quite useful. You can activate snapshots, create snapshots, change environment variables, migrate in-flight processes, add new files to your set of uh, uh, managed files, and the list goes on and on and on. So there's a set of BPM commands, some of which may be useful to you to be able to run inside of a BPM environment. And beyond that, you've got access to all the WebSphere application server commands. For example, the creation of new JMS queues, or the query of JNDI resources, and the list goes on and on and on. So you could imagine, for example, creating a BPM process that on first installation needs to create JMS queues, or needs to create a new JDBC definition. Well, you could ask your administrator to perform those commands on your behalf, or in the deployment script for your BPM application, BPM could run those commands and update the WAS environment on your behalf. All right, so that's the principle of what we want to achieve. Now let's look at how we can achieve it. Now I'm going to show you some code, but I'm also going to make that code available to you through GitHub. So you're going to be able to uh, download this code and use it yourself. Let me switch environments. 
All right, so bunch of code, 70 lines. It's not much. This is only, this is it. This is all we need to look at. This is a Java class. This Java class takes as input a command to run and the list of parameters for that command. Now this Java class, you compile it, you generate a jar file, and then that's the end of your Java code. So that was a brief journey into Java code programming. Let's log in to my BPM environment. I've forgotten my password. No, I haven't. I've remembered it now. So we log into our BPM environment and through services, external service, Java REST, next, select uh, that we're importing a Java file and select the Java class that we had previously imported, BPM admin task.jar, and now I can call that Java class from within my BPM environment. So let's illustrate that here. Let's see which one shall I use. Let's do update a file. So if we look over in the IBM Knowledge Center, we find that one of the was admin commands available to us is called update file. Now this update file is normally invoked through a WS admin command from the command line like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we can invoke it within a BPM process. So we look at the parameters to it. It takes as a parameter the name of the command, which container BPM process we're updating, the type of file, the name of the file as known to BPM, and the source file on the file system. Now if we go and have a look at uh, my script here, my script here prepares a set of variables. We've got two variables. One is the command and the other is a set of name value pairs corresponding to the parameters. We set the values of those variables. Uh, we set the command to be update file and here are my values. This is going to take the contents of this file slash temp mydata.dat and replace the web file called test1 with the contents of this file. Now to show you that actually does something, let's bring up a browser, let uh, coach, let's look at our coach and I've got a custom HTML element here and that HTML element is going to take its content from the manage file. If I run this coach, we run, we see the file currently has the value hello world. Now let me drop to a Unix command shell. Let me now change, let me find the right unit command shell. Let me change the value of this file. VI, what did I call this file? X dot, what did I call the file? List. My data dot dat. VI, my data dot dat. And let's put in a new phrase. Hello, says Neil. There we go. Nice change of text. So I've now got new text in my mydata.dat in the file system. If I cat that file, we see it contains hello world, hello says Neil. Now if we go and look at my BPM service, which is going to execute the Java class called run admin task, which takes as input the command and the parameters, and the command is update the file with these parameters, I run this command, I hit the play button, it runs, the service is completed. Now if I go back to my client side human service and I run the same human service again, uh, let me close this window, let me run it again, there we go, and now it's hello world, hello says Neil. Now you saw a lot of tech gobbledygook going on in there, but let's look at what happened. I updated a BPM managed file called test1. I updated that from within BPM. I asked BPM to go read the contents of a managed file and replace the contents of that managed file with the new file in the file system. Previously, without this capability, to be able to run Java, uh, I'm sorry, uh, WS admin commands from within the context of BPM, that wouldn't have been possible.
And this was merely, merely one example of the 100 plus additional BPM commands that you get through WS Admin through the ability to run this Java class. Now we're not doing anything invalid from a BPM or WAS standpoint. We're simply invoking a documented, supported IBM class that is fully available for use and we're running this class from within the context of BPM to perform these activities. And again, let me stress, not only do you have these BPM additional commands, all of a sudden you have the full access of all the WebSphere application server administrative commands. So again, this was just a quick technical tutorial illustrating a, a, a good find, if you want to call it that, or a little technique on using BPM and WAS together. Um, associated with this link, I'll send you, I'll give you the documentation and a link to where you can download this fragment of Java code, which is only some 50 lines or so, and you can use it in your own projects. I hope you found this useful, and I'll talk to you all soon. Bye for now.